JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week December the 7th until December the 11th. I am Harlamos Pissuros, Senior Mar Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week is likely to be crucial for the pound as it may be the last chance for the EU and the UK to strike a trade deal ahead of the December 31st Brexit deadline. In the US, the spotlight is likely to fall on discussions around the new, around the new coronavirus aid bill, with Friday being the deadline for the Congress to pass a budget in order to avoid a government shutdown. Elsewhere, we have the Bank of Canada and the ECB deciding on monetary policy on Wednesday and Thursday, respectively. But let's take things from the beginning. Monday is a very light day in terms of economic data releases, with uh, no top-tier items on the agenda. During the Asian morning, we already got China's uh, trade balance for November, with the nation's surplus coming in higher than anticipated. While later in the day, we have Canada's IVPMI for the month, which is expected to have declined to 51.5 from 54.5. In our view, market participants are likely to keep their gaze mostly locked on developments surrounding the political landscape. In the UK, the Parliament uh, will vote on the internal market bill under which the government seeks to alter parts of the withdrawal agreement. If they do so, something like that will anger the EU and diminish any chances for the two sides uh, reaching common ground on trade. In other words, an ODL Brexit will become a more realistic scenario and the pound is likely to fall off the cliff. Now, for the pound to trade higher, we need to see the Parliament rejecting the bill and headlines suggesting that uh, the EU and the UK have found some sort of common ground over uh, their differences. On Thursday, an EU summit begins, and this will be the last before the end of the year. Thereby, this will be the last, of, the last official chance for the two sides to seal a deal, which uh, means that they will have to sort out their differences beforehand. In the US, uh, this week, the spotlight is likely to fall on discussions around the new coronavirus aid bill. Last week, a 908 billion US dollars bipartisan plan gained momentum in the Congress with, uh, with conservative lawmakers expressing their support. A couple of weeks ago, a bill before year end looked uh, nearly impossible, but now news and headlines point otherwise. However, it remains unclear whether Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will agree to such a plan as he has been pushing to keep uh, relief spending near $500 billion. Friday is the deadline for the Congress to pass a $1.4 trillion US dollars budget or risk shutting down the government. And it remains to be seen whether they will do so and how much of this amount, if any, will be the coronavirus package. At this point, we need to note that uh, the Congress could uh, approve a spending resolution without including a coronavirus aid bill, something that may still come as a disappointment to market participants. For equities and risk-linked assets to continue marching north, we need to see lawmakers agreeing in both a spending budget as well as a coronavirus uh, relief package. Now back to the data. On Tuesday during the Asian morning, Japan's second estimate of uh, the third of uh, quarter three GDP is due to be released, and it is expected to confirm that the Japanese economy has rebounded 5% quarter over quarter after tumbling 8.2% in the second quarter. In Europe, we have the German ZW survey for December, Eurozone's employment change for the third quarter, and the bloc's final GDP estimate for the third quarter. 
With regards to the ZW survey, the current conditions index is expected to have declined to minus 66 uh, uh, from minus 64.3, while the economic sentiment one is forecast to have risen to 46 from 39. Eurozone's employment change is forecast to show that the economy has lost 2.8% quarter-over-quarter jobs after gaining 0.9% in, in the second quarter. The final GDP print is just expected to confirm its, sec its second estimate of 2.6% uh, quarter-over-quarter, uh, excuse me, of 12.6% uh, quarter-over-quarter. Now, on Wednesday, the biggest uh, event on the agenda is the Bank of Canada monetary policy gathering. However, as we know that last week, we don't expect this bank to rock the boat this time around. At its latest meeting, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates unchanged and scaled back its QE program, noting that the economic outlook has evolved largely as anticipated in the July monetary policy report. Since then, inflation has accelerated and economic growth for the third quarter has rebounded strongly. What's more, data on Friday shows that the unemployment rate fell more than expected, with the economy adding more jobs than the market has forecasted. With all that in mind, someone could argue that policymakers could scale back even more the QE program, but bearing in mind that they did so just at the prior meeting, we don't expect any action this week. We may get a somewhat more sanguine language in the meeting statement, which could prove positive for the Canadian dollar. Having said that, we believe that as a commodity-linked uh, currency, the loon is likely to stay mainly driven by the broader market sentiment and especially by movements in, uh, in oil prices. Remember that uh, last week, uh, when oil prices spiked higher on the OPEX uh, decision, the loon gained as well. Uh, <clears throat> Now, as for Wednesday's data releases, during the Asian morning, China's CPI and PPI for November are coming out. The CPI rate is expected to have risen to 0.8% year-over-year from 0.5%, while the PPI one is anticipated to have inched up to minus 1.8% year-over-year from minus 2.1%. Minus, uh, in Europe, we have Germany's trade balance for October, while in the US, we get the jolts uh, job openings for the same month. Now, on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the ECB. When they last met, uh, policymakers of this bank said that in December, the new macroeconomic projections will allow a thorough reassessment of the economic outlook and that they will recalibrate their instruments as appropriate. In other words, uh, they hinted that they are very likely to expand their stimulative efforts at this gathering. Expectations are for a 500 billion euros expansion of their QE purchases and Thus, if this is the case, the euro is unlikely to move much. For the common currency to move higher, the bank has to disappoint, namely to deliver less stimulus than what the market currently anticipates. That said, with the euro already well above 120 against, against its uh, US counterpart, and inflation in the block staying in uh, negative waters, the last thing the ECB would like is further appreciation of its uh, currency. Therefore, we see more chances for policymakers to over-deliver than, uh, than to under-deliver. We believe that there is a uh, decent chance for expanding QE by more than expected and also talking, talking down the euro, either through the meeting statement or President Lagarde's uh, post-decision press uh, conference. Now in the UK, we have the monthly GDP for October alongside the industrial and manufacturing production rates for the month. The nation's uh, trade balance for the same month is also due to be released. No forecast is available for the GDP, while the industrial and manufacturing production year-over-year -year rates are forecast to have declined to minus 6.4 and minus 8.4 from year-over-year, uh, -year, uh, from uh, minus 6.3 and minus 7.9% respectively. The nation's trade deficit is expected to have widened to 9.6 billion pounds from 9.35 billion. That said, as we already noted, uh, focus uh, for GBP traders is likely to stay uh, mostly on developments surrounding uh, the Brexit landscape and whether the EU and the UK could uh, find common ground on a trade deal rather than uh, those economic data. Now, later in the day, the US CPIs for November are coming out. Both the headline and core rates are expected to have ticked down to 1.1 and 1.5% year-over-year from 1.2 and 1.6% respectively. Uh, 
with the Fed uh, noting that it will allow inflation to overshoot its 2% target for some time so that inflation averages 2% over time, well below target readings may increase the chances for the Fed to expand its uh, stimulus efforts at its uh, upcoming uh, gathering. Now, finally, on Friday, uh, nothing uh, special. We get Germany's final CPIs for November, which are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. While in the US, the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for December is forecast to have declined fractionally to 76.5 from 76.9. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.